Hits and Crits. This video is brought to you by Asmodee. What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and to something new. Today we're going to talk to Kiste, aka Max. You might have seen him in our last army showcase video on his grimdark Greyjoys. If you haven't seen it, please check it out right now. And Kiste is going to tell us today how he does his slap chop plus method. That's slap chop with some extra steps that give your miniatures a lot more oomph. Kiste, how are you? Hey, I'm fine. Thanks for having me. And uh, I'm here today to show you uh, the general workflow I use on my Song of Ice and Fire miniatures on the uh, example of the Bloody Mama skirmishers, which I really like. And I trained this method over the last years to get uh, fast results that I'm happy with. And I think the even beginners can um, use these techniques uh, to get solid results in a good amount of time. So yeah, basically it's slap chop and oil wash. Let's see how this works in detail. Awesome. I can't wait. And if you guys want to see more of these painting tutorials, uh, or if you like the video, uh, please leave a like, subscribe. And if you're so inclined, please consider becoming a Patreon. You'll find all the links in the description below. And now let's head right in. The well-known slap job or grisal underpainting method involves priming the miniatures dark and then go in with a lighter color in a kind of zenithal method, resulting in a monochrome version of the model that already has black shadows and light or gray, uh, light gray or white highlights. This is then followed by using things like contrast or speed paints, which are very thin, high contrast paints that settle in the recesses and shading the model and the process. In my case, I use inks instead of instead of labeled speed paints, but it's kind of the same. The only thing that matters is that you have a, a thinner paint that flows into the recesses and colors in the underpaint. I start by priming the models black and then give them a zenithal spray of a gray primer, meaning I really spray a gray from the top and uh, and a little tilted in from every side, so it looks like the model is uh, lighted from above, like from the natural light from the sun. Once this is dried, I dry brush the model with white, focusing a bit more on the top to enhance the zenithal effect. In this step, I also try to give some texture to fabric or wood. By that, I mean if the, there are wooden things that are sculpted smooth or smooth capes, something like this, I try to stipple and make some brush strokes that are seen, uh, which then later will look like a texture. In the case of wood, I sometimes even draw small lines like this, but if you dry brush in one direction, you can make it easier. As usual, when dry brushing, um, dry your brush on a paper, something like a paper towel, so you don't have a lot of uh, paint left on the brush. Uh, this means you sometimes need more, multiple passes to get the desired effect, but better than to have too much paint on it, this could ruin your paint job. I prefer uh, dry brushing the white instead of also spraying it from the top because that way I can focus on areas or textures I really want to raise. After this I f uh, color the model in with inks like classical slap job. You can use what you like here. As said before, it just needs to be some thin paint like speed paint, contrast paint, air yeah, dipping inks. They will all work for this and it comes down to preference, what you like best, um, what you can work better with. Some are a little bit thinner, some are a little bit thicker. Every brand just has small differences, but the basic principle stays the same.
I usually am looking at a lot of inspiration or examples online like this uh, in this step or like the artwork or models by other painters the, um, to find the color schemes I like or how to paint which detail this can sometimes be not so clear if you just look at the model and yeah it always pays off to look something up if you are not sure. Sometimes, uh, especially with brighter colors like the red in this case, you need to take two passes to get a, re a really good saturated color. It's important there that you will let the first um, coat dry before you apply the second to not uh, remove uh, your work before. After all inks are dried I paint the face of this model with uh, white. I use uh, Vallejo model color white in this case because I think it has the best coverage. Um, this works perfectly to get the Bloody Mama's facial makeup as seen in the artwork. One coat uh, is enough here because I will get to it after the oil wash step again. After that I paint the metallics, which I also didn't dry brush before because I just use metallic paints, not speed paints in this case. Um, which is also personal preference, but I really like the look of the normal metallic paints more. Here it also is up to you as I sometimes dry brush or highlight the metal before I apply my oil wash later, like on the gold bronze tones here, but sometimes I highlight after the oil wash, like on the basic metal here, depending on which look I want. If you highlight before the wash, the whole uh, highlights will get dulled down a little but it will look smoother maybe and if you do it after the wash you can get some more contrast in and get some more like harder scratches or something like that you can make it uh, give it a really scratched up look which is also nice and all these steps you don't have to be perfectly accurate especially in the recesses because after the oil wash um, is applied it will correct some of those mistakes automatically when everything is colored like this you can could also use this model as yeah some would say battle ready and it would be fine too you can see it here it's already a well playable model i would say but with a few extra steps you can re really give it more personality so that will be what we're looking at next before I start with the oil 
wash, I also add things like freehands on banners, but that shall be a topic for another time. I am using an oil wash as a unifying wash to bring all the colors together, tone them down a bit, and because I think it fits those evil mercenaries just fine to look a bit more dirty. I mix my oil washes myself with white spirit, you can see the consistency here in the video. And uh, yeah, oil is quite different to acrylics and needs a bit of getting used to, but I think it's really worth it. Generally, oils and enamel paints need to be thinned with uh, thinner like white spirit, not water. They dry in generally longer, but remain to be reactivated with thinner, which allows for some very cool and effective techniques. So after mixing the wash, I just spread it generously across the whole miniature. I continue then and I then continue with the next 11 models of the tray so it has some drying time on every model and then I just begin to wipe off the oil wash with a dry paper towel you can see the wash stays in the recesses and also changes the color slightly even when wiped off if at this point you think the colors gotten too dark. Uh, you could easily wipe off the oil wash with a Q-tip or cotton or some sponge or something like this, soaked in some white spirit to make it uh, to get back to the original color. It's that kind of flexible. Um, after I'm finished with wiping off, I let it dry for at least one day, so the oil is um, really dry. It will still be very glossy, but yeah, after one day it's uh, dry enough to paint over it with acrylics again. If you do this too fast, you could um, yeah have accidents like mixing the paints again. This is another step at which you could easily call the mini done. After the oil wash is dried, all that's missing now are some details. Um, at this point, like I said before, to make the metal look scratched and worn, I painted uh, roughly now mostly on the edges, sometimes even kind of dry brush it. This makes it look interesting and also gets the focus on weapons armor because now this is um, brighter than the rest of the miniature. For these miniatures I added some white face paint on the bloody mamas. For this dirty look here it was enough to just loosely slap one coat of, coat of paint on there. Details like this are fast but really give the uh, miniature more character. Yeah, now onto the eyes. Everybody has a very different different preference here I think. I for my part paint the eye sockets with black, then uh, a dot of white in, on the eyes and then I add the uh, iris pupils uh, at, at last as a black dot that leaves white on both sides. Others draw to prefer to make a much smaller dot which leaves white also on uh, top and bottom of the iris of pupils.
to finish the models I added some weathering effects like a rust effect from dirty down which I stipple on and then uh, rework with water to get a cool and realistic look out of this really awesome and easy to use product. Uh, stippling which I think I mentioned uh, more than one time already is just a technique where you roughly like step on like make a stepping motion with your brush to really get little dots and scratches onto the model. After those uh, detail steps, uh, you could call them, are finished, I added basing texture um, to the base and also uh, got some of the, uh, this paste on the boots and the lower parts of coats and stuff like that to tie the miniature into the muddy, dirty setting. In the end, I just added some tufts and matte varnish to finish this paint job off. And yeah, this is like the uh, what the finished model uh, looks like. And here you also have the complete unit. So this wraps up my slap job and all wars tutorial for you. I hope you enjoy the Scrimdark style as much as I do. Thanks to Hits and Crits for having me on the channel and see you next time. Bye! Come for the hits and stay for the crits.